When most of us think of photo etching, we think of a very small package at the hobby shop that costs a fortune for a few small pieces. But with a very small amount of knowledge, you'll soon discover making and using your very own photo etch parts is much easier than you think. Let's not waste any more time and get started with the tutorial. The hardest part of this whole process is designing something to etch. At a bare minimum, you can use a program like Microsoft Paint. However, if you use a program like Adobe Illustrator or something similar, you'll be able to get much better designs. There's a bit of a learning curve to using a program like this, but the results are definitely worth the time spent learning the program. For this tutorial, I'll be using the photo etching kit from Micromark called the Pro Etch. It comes with everything required, however, if you live overseas, you'll need to purchase the etching chemicals locally from your own country. Supplied are two clear sheets for printing on. Before using them, make sure they are free from fingerprints and dirt, as this will affect the print quality. One side is ever so slightly duller than the other, but it was very difficult to tell. If you're struggling to figure out what side to print on, just grab a highlighter and draw a small dot in one of the corners. If the highlighter ink rubs off, then you'll need to flip the sheet over. If the highlighter ink doesn't rub away, then you have the correct side for printing. And now we're ready to print. Make sure that all the print settings are set to their highest quality. And if your printer has the option, adjust the color to ensure it prints as dark as possible. After printing, just let it sit aside for about 10 minutes to ensure the ink is completely dry. If you're tempted to try overhead projector clear sheets instead of the Micromark sheets, let me save you some time and money. On the left is a projector sheet and on the right is the Micromark clear sheet. They both look great, but let's get a closer look. The Micromark sheet looks nice and crisp, and the projector sheet in comparison looks terrible. The ink is uneven, blotchy and more translucent compared to the smooth, sharp and even Micromark sheet. Any spots or imperfections can be touched up with a Sharpie. When cutting out the templates, leave a fair bit of overhang in the sheets except for the top sheet. The top sheet needs to be taped to the bottom sheet and this is much easier if one sheet is bigger than the other. It's easier to register the templates by first taping the bottom sheet to something white. In the Pro Etch kit, you'll have a sheet of white styrene that does a perfect job for this. Just make sure the ink side is facing up on the bottom sheet and now with the top sheet, make sure the ink side of the sheet is facing down and line it up with the bottom sheet. Take your time lining them up. The closer to perfect you can get them, the better your final etched piece will be. With everything lined up, you can tape the top and bottom sheets together. You only need to tape three sides so we can create a pocket for our metal to slot into. Now we can remove it from the white styrene, trim away the excess and put it aside to be used later. Also just remember that the sheets are not waterproof and if any drops of water get on the inner surface they'll be ruined, so keep them dry. The Pro Edge system comes with a 0.005 inch sheet of brass and a 0.005 inch sheet of stainless steel. I'll be using the brass for these etches. Cut a piece of brass so it will fit inside the pocket and if you use scissors remember to flatten out any kinks or bends that you might get in the corners. Next I'll cut some photo resist to fit over the metal. It's safe to open the UV sensitive resist under normal room lighting for a few minutes however to be on the safe side I dim the lights to preserve the life of the roll. You'll need two pieces, one for each side of the metal. While I continue to prepare the metal, I store the two small pieces of photo resist in a dark box until I'm ready to apply them. The metal needs to be polished. Simply use the supplied polishing pad. 
As you can see at the moment, the water is dripped onto the brass and it beads up. To polish, dampen the polishing pad with some water and rub back and forth on the metal in the direction of the grain until the water no longer beads up but instead evenly spreads across the surface. Both sides need polishing and once done, rinse the metal with some water. Try to avoid touching the top surfaces and handle the metal from the edges to avoid getting fingerprints on the surface. Now we can apply the photo resist. The resist has a protective cover on both sides. One side will peel away much easier than the other. And to do this you'll just need to use a piece of sticky tape and gently peel away revealing one of the corners. If you're having trouble you can use two pieces of tape, one on each side of the same corner. The metal is still wet from cleaning which is what we want. Gently place the resist over the metal and lightly press and rub along the resist. This will help remove the excess water from between the metal and the photoresist. Then do the same for the other side of the metal. In preparation for laminating, the metal is placed between two pieces of carrier sheet. The carrier sheet has a shiny side and a dull side. The metal gets wedged between the two shiny sides and the dull sides should be facing out. If you're like me and live in Australia, you'll need a 110 volt power source to plug the laminator into. Now we just need to wait a few minutes for it to heat up. Now that it's ready, we just feed the metal in between the two pieces of carrier sheet through the laminator. On the second pass, we flip it over and rotate it 90 degrees. Check that you have no bubbles and we can move on. If you have any bubbles, you'll need to strip the photoresist completely back and reapply it to the metal again and start over. To expose the metal, we place it into the template pocket, ensuring that it's centered. To make sure we get nice crisp lines from the exposure, we'll need to place the template and metal in between two pieces of perspex and clamp tightly from all sides. Everything here is supplied in the kit. The light I used for the exposure is a Nelson portable security floodlight and a 100 watt Philips clear Edison reflector globe. It's set up to be about 17 centimeters away from the table, which puts it about 15 centimeters away from the top surface of the perspex. It gets pretty warm, so I wouldn't set it up any closer than that. I set my timer for 12 minutes and go get a drink of coffee. It will gradually turn a medium purple colour and once the timer goes off, I flip the plate over and cook on side 2 for another 12 minutes. If you're wondering how I got 12 minutes, it's from doing a few test pieces. I did one at 10 minutes and it wasn't quite enough and another I did for 15 minutes and some of the black areas started to become exposed, so 12 minutes it was. To develop and remove the unexposed photoresist, I simply use washing soda. I mix a ratio of about 1% into 100 ml of water. It doesn't have to be perfect, this stuff is pretty forgiving, as long as it's close. Before we dunk our metal into the washing soda, we need to remove the final protective layer. Again with a piece of sticky tape, press it onto one corner and peel it back. You should see a clear sheet being removed. Do this on both sides, then drop the metal into the developer bath and gently brush the surface for about 2 minutes on each side or until all of the unexposed resist has been removed and then rinse in clean water.
you should be able to see clear edges around your pattern, as if your design is a sticker that has been pressed on. It's hard to tell on camera, but when you look at it and touch it with your own hands, you'll know. The etching tank is prepared following the supplied instructions. It's pretty straightforward. The metal is pressed into the clip and test fitted into the tank. To etch I'm using hydrogen peroxide and I'm also using hydrochloric acid. Because the etchant we're making is highly corrosive, you'll most certainly want to work in a well ventilated area and you'll need to use skin and eye protection. To calculate exactly how much etchant I'll need to mix up, I firstly fill the tank with water up to the desired level. Next I weigh the water which in this scenario was just over 240ml. So now I know in order to mix a 2 to 1 ratio of 2 parts hydrogen peroxide and 1 part hydrochloric acid, I'll need a total of 160ml of hydrogen peroxide and 80ml of hydrochloric acid. Now we're ready to start etching. Insert the metal that's attached to the lid and turn the air pump on. I'll leave it for a few minutes then I'll remove it from the tank, give it a quick rinse and then I'll remove it from the clip and rotate the metal 180 degrees then put it back into the tank. I repeat this process about 3 or 4 times. The side that's pressed into the clip tends to etch a little bit slower than the other side so that's why we need to rotate it around the clip a few times during etching. Once it's finished, remove the parts from the tank and give them a thorough rinse in water. Some bits broke away, but that's okay. You may find some parts are fully etched, but others need just another minute or two. This is easily done by removing that part that needs additional etching and placing it in a smaller container with some of the etching fluid in it. Gently swish the etching around until the part is fully etched. It is possible to do an entire etch in a small container from scratch. I found by elevating the piece in the container helps get more even etching, however it takes a little bit longer overall to etch. And you'll need to continuously agitate the fluid during etching. Just mix up the same ratios of hydrogen peroxide and hydrochloric acid and watch your design come to life. Remember to carefully dispose of the etchant solution once you're done. I put mine in a spare bottle and once it's full, I'll take it down to the local waste facility that can handle these materials. To remove the rest of the photoresist, I roughly mix a heaped teaspoon of washing soda in with water. After mixing it, I just place the parts into the water and leave it to soak. After about 15 or 20 minutes, the resist will just float away, revealing the completed pieces. Now they just need a good rinse in clean water and we have our finished pieces. I use a good pair of scissors with a very fine tip which is perfect for cutting these very small parts and you'll also need some small files to clean up the edges. Here you can see the difference between a 0.015 inch thick piece of copper and a 0.005 inch piece of brass. You'll soon discover if you have any designs with very fine details, you'll get better results using thinner material rather than the thicker stuff. To add these to my models and glue them to plastic, I find using standard CA glue and a pin works just fine. And that completes the tutorial. 
you should now have no trouble designing and etching your very own metal parts to add insane amounts of details to your scenes. If you like the video and would like to help support the channel, you might like to become a patron. I have some perks for patron supporters and you can find out more by checking out my patron page. Cheers and thanks for watching.